<laughs> Perfect. So, why don't we get to it? Yeah, I think um, it comes down to like a personal story. Uh, me and my sister grew up like uh, profoundly deaf, but we both have cochlear implants and we never really had um, exposure to the Auslan and deaf community. So I think like at a um, later stage in our lives, we thought, you know, we want to learn sign language. Um, so there wasn't much visibility in mainstream society. Um, that's why I think it's important to have some awareness of the deaf community in our society. I feel so conscious now. <laughs> The idea for this project came two years ago where I saw a cafe overseas and I thought why isn't there one in Sydney, Australia? So I entered a competition, um, Nest Cafe Head Start Pitch Competition and um, for some reason, lucky reason, it got selected in the top 10. So I thought, oh, this is something that someone wants to, you know, have in Sydney, but just haven't got around to doing it. Um, so then I didn't really do anything with that idea for like a couple of years until like two years ago. I was like graduating soon. I thought, you know, I should do something with this idea. Uh, so it started off with like a 5 a.m thing so i woke up at like 5 a.m and i was like i will just research all of the social enterprise cafes in sydney um email all of them and i talked to a lot of them so parliament on king there's one in uh, bankstown and there's also one in surrey hills so um it's just a matter of like talking to people and then going to the deaf community side so reaching out to royal institute of deaf and blind children Deaf Society, um, Here For You, uh, many organisations and advocacy bodies that um, you know tap into servicing the deaf community and just asking them whether there will be volunteers um, interested in this project and that's how it really got started um, and people started emailing me saying they want to really get involved so and then we organised our first trial um, October the first Wednesday, um, that's where it all started. Yeah, so a lot of volunteers approached me saying they want to get involved, um, you know, just sharing the Auslan language to other people and also some were deaf themselves and wanted to get hospitality experience. So there was a mixture and that's what I learned that, you know, deafness isn't just like deaf or hearing, but there's a range, a spectrum in between. So we got like a spectrum of volunteers on board. I think like for other cafe owners, not only cafe owners, but any business owner really, um, to take this event at Parliament on King as a case study. And as you can see, we had a lot of people come in on the Wednesdays and it shows that many people are interested in this. And I think it will be really cool to, you know, roll out this sort of program um, out to other cafes and businesses because in the end, it's all about making an impact and to do that, you need to roll it out in mainstream cafes so that the visibility increases and more people are aware of the deaf and hard of hearing community as well as learn the language. For the hearing people, I would say that Auslan is a very visual language. It might seem really awkward and like rigid, but in the end, if you get used to it, it's just like theatre, it's like another language and I think it originated that way. So don't be afraid to, you know, give it a shot. Just come to like Parliament King and, you know, you can really just like come to one of our deaf baristas and sign your coffee really and we can teach you.